Okay, so um, even with a little delay, which will cause a little delay for everything, I'm so happy that uh, Reka Bucci managed to uh, come to Ljubljana for the first time to visit our festival. Actually, just to, to, um, to, uh, to explain a little bit uh, better and longer. So we still wait for people to sit because we want to start this uh, properly. The, the initial idea with Reka was that uh, she said uh, she don't like to be in juries, but then anyway, like Lutza was in juries, so having two Hungarians in a jury would not be proper, I would say, because then it would get uh, probably, they are very good friends as well, so it's not nice to have very good friends together in a jury, because then you have uh, two votes for the same thing almost. And our idea was that uh, uh, Reka would prolong the festival for one more day, so on Monday, which unfortunately all of you would be gone already, uh, that we would present her retrospective and we, had, we would have like a masterclass with her at the Balashi Institute. But I'm happy that it turned out like this, so at least uh, we have a chance to have a proper discussion with you, with the festival guests, with your professional colleagues, with your friends from anima the animation world. Um, and uh, uh, I don't know if, probably you all know her films. We, we screened Solar Walk, the last film, in the Best of the World program. And we will pay a tribute, uh, also like uh, Symphony Number no. 42 was screened as a part of the MOME student uh, retrospective, part of the Hungarian retrospective curated by Anaida Oros, that I am thanking again publicly. So we'll go on, Anaida, for longer, because I think really you brought us some great films. Yesterday, The Son of White Mare was uh, really a great, uh, great experience. And, uh, um, and so, tomorrow at 3 o'clock, just for you that you'll still be here, uh, Reka's films will be screened at the Slovenian Cinematheque um, as a retrospective. And actually, Reka is uh, interesting to understand there are all, only four films, only, like in, 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 uh, in breaks. And, uh, but after you finish uh, Mome with Symphony Number no. 42, you manage to finish three professional films. Among the three, don't know where we're going. It's qu quite a, a personal thing that you did together with Peter Millard. So it was not a joke. I would not call it a joke, but it was like a... The conversation with a fellow animator and, and an experimental way to make films. Uh, Love was your, um, we could say it, um, professional debut and uh, your, uh, the world got to know you also because of selections at Berlinale and uh, many, many other festivals. But then now it's Solar Walk, you're really touring the world and you're showing that uh, authorial animation has great potential. You are getting uh, awards, not only at the Animation Film Festival, also like short film festivals are choosing your film, and I think that that's very important. Um, and uh, basically, uh, I would leave you the floor because like you brought us some great photos from in behind that we will see, and uh, I, I will let you maybe to start because like, or, or maybe like your background, we said Mome Academy, what you did before, just understand a little bit, uh, also before enrolling to MOME, you were uh, illustrating, drawing, um, uh, making visual art already like from an early stage or you discovered this uh, talent that you have uh, on only after uh, studying at MOME? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, uh, I basically, I wasn't someone who always knew that I would do film or animation. I actually kind of, su I'm suspicious about people who say that because I, d I don't think it's true that someone would know from the age of three that they would like direct films. <clears throat> because I kind of think that as a child when I was watching uh, animation or films it was this, um, like I didn't even know it was made by h human, you know? <laughs> it's uh, like a weird magical trick or something, which it is, animation. So I, um, I, I, I was just watching a lot of uh, films and cartoons and like, every, like everybody, like every child, and I was drawing from, a, like, as I, I loved to draw as a kid, and, and I was also drawing a lot of comics, so for myself, basically, just 
when you you know play as a child like with puppets or something i was uh, doing the same but i was like drawing the the story and um hand handing it to my parents or my sister to read it as like a, a treat or something and uh, uh it uh, it sort of uh, crystallized more at the end of high school that I would like to apply for MoMA. And um, actually, I didn't even dare to do that. Like, my parents were like, why don't you try? Because it's hard to get into that school. And so they were encouraging me to, to um, uh, try and then go to uh, drawing school and, like, try uh, and start learning the craft, mm -hmm. basically. So it was like... It was a weird thing because usually parents are supposed to like stop you from having an artist career and they were like why something. don't you try architecture which will bring us some money as well or Archit yeah my sister is an architect so she she made it she's the smarter one <laughs> <laughs> maybe let, let's start to comment on the, on the slides that you that you brought because i think it's yeah. another one another great one <laughs> so i this i just like brought this because i thought that I just mashed up all the like uh, sort of uh, sketches and fast like things I did when I was um, at the masters in MoMA. I was doing uh, Symphony Number no. Forty Two that you can either watch online or watch at my retrospective tomorrow. And the, this, yeah, this is the film uh, in like little stills. And I just uh, the the previous picture shows how it looked, or this one actually. When I like was drawing the 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 storyboard or the animatic very quick, and it was a really fun process. And I kind of think that this film is still like, even though I see so many things in it that I dislike or sort of think as like it are like a ch is a childish approach a little bit to like a lot of things. Um, I still love this film because it's it's it reminds me of like a very playful, very nice. Uh, process when I was starting to work with on this, and I was also working very closely with uh, my sound designer Peter Benjamin Lukac, and he, we had like this great, um, yeah, um, interaction. Uh, interaction to when when I was coming with up with this film. You you said one word which is like playfulness. This is that something that you preserved <laughs> uh, until the very la very last day and until the very last project that you, that you made. Um, uh, it's with solar walk. Walk also, we we feel that you know you you had fun and you enjoyed making those characters and uh, just become alive and interact and change. So, it's is it important to like have fun while making? Yeah, I think I mean it's impossible to like do animation without having fun. Like, you, you, this is not gonna work mm -hmm. because it's such a long process. You have to really um, enjoy what you are doing and. Um, I think as uh, as I was sort of analyzing the way I work or the process that I do, it's really similar to when I was a child and you know you, you just come up with the idea as you go or like you just you just um sort of try to follow this um In uh, intuition. This, like into it yeah, like an intuit like a you know, like um automated writing. It it's this technique that was used like like long since long in the art world and and also the film uh, world. So I think that that's an, a very interesting um, way of approaching narrative. So like kind of channeling your unconscious and uh, going with that. But then a lot of stuff that happens through that process is also useless. Like a lot of trash will uh, come out of that. But then if you like curate your ideas the right way, then. It should work. Talking about ideas, but then uh, let's focus maybe on the drawings, on the visual part. Uh, do you you have sketchbooks? Where, where are those characters that are really special and? Yeah, actually, I also brought some uh, scans of sketchbooks mm -hmm. um, or my sketchbook. I have a lot. Like I like I think like more like most artists have this sketchbook problem. <laughs> Like you have so many and you start one and then you like see another one you like, a different paper, different format or whatever, and then you buy that one. So like I have a stack of unfinished sketchbooks. But um, yeah, when I start to get interested in a, in a film or a topic, it's, uh, it's I think, just um, natural that you start 
uh, drawing all the time in that world and then sort of slowly uh, establish the environment. I let you go through a little bit. So with the yeah, I just, uh, this is some slides. Like this, yeah, uh, Love was my first basically professional short film and I was producing it, uh, in, it was a French-Hungarian co-production and I, I'm, I was producing it in Denmark and I started to develop it through this uh, workshop called ASF. I'm sure many of you heard about this European uh, animation workshop. Uh, animation sans frontières. Yeah, animation without borders. <laughs> and you go to like, uh, like different countries, uh, Germany, Denmark, and France, and Hungary, and you visit all the schools, uh, the, the biggest animation schools, and you have classes there. And um, I started love there. And I had a lot of boring lectures, so I had like time to like, sketch. <laughs> And it's just, yeah, a couple. And then I also, um, so the sketchbook is sort of like an endless format. It's mm -hmm. like, not, it's, 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 not it's not curated in it's any like, way. It's like a loop. It's like just whatever, yeah. And then, and then I started to draw on post-its because it was a nice way to, to, to frame mm -hmm. some stuff and... Um, yeah, like <clears throat> just to have some details or ideas um, a little bit more in, con in a concentrated format. And then I had a lot of these. I just scanned eight, but I had like 30 or something. And then I was arranging those around. And, um <clears throat> and then what I also always do when I have um, a project, I, I start making visuals that are sort of representing the atmosphere a little bit and they sometimes have characters that never end up in the film or anything or like uh, scenarios that will never end up there but it's just fun to actually make something that you you like and represents uh, some sort of uh, feeling that you want to get across and also if you are applying for funding obviously you you have to sort of have something that is more appealing to the to the to any sort of panel that yeah, I, I, I brought some um, uh, scans of the sketchbook that I have for storyboard. Um, so it's it's just for myself basically to order ideas around a little bit more before I go into making an animatic out of out of the yeah because none of my films have dialogue or nar narration, so it's really visually. Um, this is a conscious decision for, for yeah, you. I think it's just a natural thing for me for my characters they don't they don't feel like they they should talk mm. <laughs> or they yeah I feel like if they would talk it would be so mu too much like they would just explain themselves and I like if a character is mysterious in a way that that you don't really know where the character is going but you are maybe interested hopefully you're interested mm -hmm while watching the character doing stuff. So um, I feel like talking would be... So it's actually funny because now I finished a film a week ago that has like full-on narration and I, I wrote the narra narration and it was actually a very uh, joyful process because I felt like finally I don't have to like show everything in a movement or in editing or whatever it is, but I can like just write it down mm -hmm. and then it's done. <laughs> but it's also a very different film from anything. Is it moving? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, yeah I, I, this is just, uh, I was producing the, yeah, the, the love in uh, Viborg, which is this magical uh, place in the middle of nowhere in uh, Denmark. And I just brought some pictures <laughs> from our team. And I wish that if 2D animation would have more interesting slides in terms of <laughs> making off but there isn't anything because we just you know sit down and animate and tv paint and do do the back backgrounds in photoshop and like the classic uh, are, are, is the software like you were mentioning tv paint so you discover it and you took it for yourself at mome already so you you choose the software that you would work with Actually, yeah, uh, symphony number no. 42 was already uh, animated in tv paint but before that so I started on paper, like 
you should, I guess, or not, you should, you shouldn't do anything. But it, I feel like it's it's a good thing to start on paper because it's so much harder. Um, and then you can like establish your toolbox as you go, and you can uh, personalize it, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, but also just like make your life easier by having a, a digital tablet and TV pin, and not having to scan every picture or p take take photographs, and and, uh, and you can like just edit the picture so much easier and faster. Mm. So uh, yeah, I started on paper, and then I went into Flash. At some point, where it, when TV Paint was like it wasn't there yet, as like it wasn't so popular yet, so I didn't know about it. And then I tried stuff in Flash, and then TV Paint. When you move to the next image, uh, can I ask you also like the the animals? Like it's it's a it was a stereotype, or it still is. Like animators, they really like to do cats and birds, and in your case, horses. So where is this? I mean, it's the love of nature, the love of uh, animal um, behavior, maybe, or like to compare our like uh, world as like human being, the social world that we have. This is something that I think that uh, uh, it was uh, analyzed very good uh, uh, from uh, Engels already, like in the times he was analyzing bees and how they behave to compare it to society of human, you know, in order to try to to get to communism. But for what is like the animal world representing for you? I always say that, like it's it's funny because people when they sort of ask me this question, they always have this tone. They are like, "Why animals? Mm. Why not human?" Mm. And I'm like, uh, "It's not. It's it's never just. Uh, or a lot of times, it's not just the question. It's more like, are you like? <laughs> people think that because animals are." characters in my film it's for kids or something because animals are not to be taken seriously or they are like not uh the not enough they don't have enough serious character that you could maybe emphasize with but i'm i'm i feel like uh, for me it's way more just about the f the shape of the character and the sound and the how it can move and and uh, it's not really about um uh, how uh, if it's a human or if it's an animal it's just uh, living uh, things also my horses look like dogs or something like they don't really look like horses i feel like i i got so many like oh the, the film with the dogs and i'm like what dogs and then they refer to love as <laughs> because it's it's like it's a very stylized way of showing whatever animal i'm never drawing them in a way that is too realistic, or like less and less. I feel like Solar Walk has strange characters that are actually not not even not human, but animals as well. Kind of like different characters, like a little bit of an alien world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> the the third the Solar Walk just uh, to mention a little bit about how what the origin was. It was this commissioned film from the Danish Jazz Orchestra and it's originally a long piece. It's like a 47 minute long um, uh, show, like a live show where the film is in the back and there is like a jazz orchestra playing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it just brought a little bit of uh, uh, like how this whole thing started. And I sort of realized that in my apartment there is this slide door and I could like write on it and draw and uh, make some like notes on it because I never worked in such a long f format so I need to have like an I needed to have like a little bit of a more like an overview in general just to sit back and look at what I am trying to do there and how the the things are going to be connected and um it's a solitary process huh? and actually maybe the most important part of the production to figure out Mm. How you feel the rhythm already, no? Here, you you think about the rhythm of the film. Yeah, and but it was really tough to like figure out in this case. Okay, this is gonna be approximately one minute. This shot, mm. like I, we had like really long shots in this because um, I basically had six months to finish 47 minutes, and for two months I was on my own, and then I had a little crew for like four and a half months, mm. and it was it was really. Uh, challenging to to 
to also come up with such a long thing in from scratch in two months. So I was just really locked up at home and uh, figuring out what. But yeah, like just like looking at the storyboard and thinking, this can be animated fast, but it also looks kind of cool and interesting, and it's going to look good in front of the orchestra. So coming up with technical solutions and uh, and like sort of uh, what is it? Um, just cheap shots, which is not so expensive to make, uh, not too much animation, but still kind of good looking. So yeah, I, I came up with, um, I, I did the same thing, I was just drawing these uh, style frames uh, for for showing to the producers and, and everybody. And there is like, you can, it's a little small, but there is a bunch of things. For example, this desert, I had this statue in there that was like blinking or doing things that was like a broken sort of, um, statue that stuff like a lot of stuff was uh, edited out and didn't end up in mm. not even the long format I just understand it completely so originally 47 minutes as a background projection for a live orchestra uh, play mm -hmm. in Copenhagen in Denmark and only one time or they toured with uh, they toured in Denmark a little bit but not uh, too much they had um, a couple of concerts in Viborg and then uh, Aarhus Copenhagen yeah like the bigger mm -hmm. cities, mm -hmm. um, but and then they had a concert actually at Flatpak Film Festival in Birmingham, which was uh, very cool that we could like get the thing out of Denmark, mm -hmm. and they are trying to organize now a Japanese tour, mm -hmm. and th but it's always really t tough because they have to find a local band because they can't push mm -hmm. twenty musicians and all their equipment to to Japan, because mm -hmm. then everybody would be broke after that. Mm -hmm. So uh, they have to, to, to teach uh, this um, music to someone, and it's a really tough piece. Mm -hmm. So they need to have like a, a very experienced jazz band. And the deal that you had, okay, like you, you made a visual for them, and then you could use their music for the film. I mean, it was already clear from the beginning that you will make your own autorial oh. cut of the yeah, film. Yeah, the thing is, yeah, I was sure that I wanted to have a core that would work as a short film because I knew that this would happen. I knew that I would work so hard on this with my team and then we would never be able to show it anywhere. So I was I, I was really prepared for doing like a, a short film out of it that I could show around. But the short film doesn't have the music. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a very different it's it's made by Mess Watzold was like uh, a, f uh, a Danish, actually he works in games, but he also loves to do music. So, and he was very enthusiastic when he saw the live show and he told me he would like to um, um, tr um, work on the short film if I need a composer for that. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning we tried to uh, contact the band if they could like lend us some, like give us some music or, or I was thinking about editing something out of the long piece, but it just wasn't what it wasn't working because mm. the, the short film is a short film. It's like edited as a film and the long thing is, is really like, it's like, a, it's not intended to, you can't just watch that long thing as a film. Mm. It's not a film. Mm. It's, it's, a, it's too slow and different editing. Let's go on with the slides. Maybe. Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, yeah, my dog is, uh, was a companion in the, in the solitude when I was developing the, and then the characters there, it's a group picture and we had to like name them for our Excel sheets and they, you know, it's like always interesting to name <laughs> my characters because they are sort of. Can I ask you about the confused man? I was, uh, <laughs> I was really confused about, about his also like. He's very his, confused, yeah. yeah. But wh wh where he comes from? From he, one of the sketchbooks or just that? Honestly, I all the characters are so it's hard to track back for me how they how they uh, sort born. of were born. were born. Yeah, I mean, I I think I just I wanted to have this character who is going through like a like a revelation like in his mind, that's sort of similar to a space trip, but it is um, inside his head. And he's just this like intellectual, um, smart man. <laughs> uh, man, I don't, I don't, yeah. And I also think it's better if I don't 
reveal all the like I don't I can't give you like and I don't think it would be nice if I would give you like a precise character description because mm -hmm. it's taking away of the film and the characters. A anyway, like uh, when when you as an author you make the film, the film is not yours anymore because like each of the yeah. audience get it for him or her in in its own way. Yeah. No? Yeah, I think it's it's so super nice that there is a space between an audience and the director and the film, and there is there shouldn't that space shouldn't be uh, like uh, ignored. Uh, I don't like it when a film ignores that space mm -hmm. that that it's trying to like get in that space and tell the the audience what to think about uh, everything and how to feel about everything. I kind of. I really also it's hard to not to do that because it's very tempting as a filmmaker to like manipulate your audience with mm. like music and like mm. you can do Manu so manipulating emotions. No? Yeah, 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 and 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 I am also doing that in a way, of course, because that's also what film does. But but uh, I'm trying to stay in like an, a healthy distance from my audience mm. and um, also like these times where like your identity is so. Um, you, um, you're uh, basically, you know, uh, talking about who you are and what you want as an individual is so uh, so important for everybody and how everybody interprets themselves and their gender and their like origin or heritage or whatever is so uh, like a it's like an actual it's like a really important thing to people more and more I think the indivi the individual as it is and then. I don't understand why people wouldn't use this in film as well, where you can like give the people this like opportunity to interpret anything uh, that they see for themselves, mm. and I don't have to like do that for them. I don't think so. Let's try to move on. That's another uh, group picture of uh, us in our studio. It, it seems like happy animators, huh? It's yeah, the, uh, the sun was shining. That's like one time a year in Denmark, so you can enjoy <laughs> that one moment. But uh, I feel like, uh, yeah, it's, it's not just animators, actually. It's also one production manager and then this guy on the right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's, uh, it was the, the guy who uh, helped me, do, who did the, finalize the, the 3D. He was in, in the 3D department. And uh, yeah, it was actually super nice. Like I remember, it's always like this, I guess, that you work on something and you feel like you're sometimes in hell. Because like, this was the hardest thing I ever had to do in many ways. And, uh, but then, yeah, it's like, this was written on the door. Mm -hmm. I wrote it there because like, um, I felt like I'm feeling bad for feeling bad already. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it was this, um, like a loop. And then we had this thing. <coughs> Nicole, Nicole, um, one of the, she was the lead animator. She found this painting of this crying boy, which is, it's a series in Denmark. There is a bunch of crying kids, mm -hmm. like paintings, and you can find them everywhere in secondhand stores. And I like she just came in one morning into the studio and she's like, this this is gonna be in the studio now. And then I decided anyone who was late on their shots would get this child mm -hmm. <laughs> staring staring at them. <laughs> so Jason got so uh, this is a test um, for like an example that so the first couple of weeks we spent or I spent with coming up with solutions for for uh, for for like moving stuff and not having to 2D animate the whole thing, but still look 2D. So these these people in the bar, these pudding people, I we call them. They uh, they have a rendezvous and they drink and they are drunk. So they they move like weird all the time. And then so it's sort of like an after effect. It's a puppet, but then inside. Uh, in the end, I put the, we placed the, the 3D um, planets, so they are turning, and then there are stars, and then the hands or the arms were 2D animated as they grab the glass and they drink and everything. So a lot of the shots were these examples of combining 2D and 3D and After Effects, and then make it look 2D or make it look like uh, it's, it's an interesting moving thing, but it's not entirely 
and so made actually a research on movement no that's yeah, really we important. we had to do a lot of that because i knew like obviously we can't animate 47 minutes of 2d in mm. four months mm. and also i brought some uh, slides from the backgrounds i painted because i also uh, was aware that this film is going to be very heavily dependent on on like colors and you know um the atmosphere it was like uh, created with, with the backgrounds no yeah I, well, just like panning on on things and having like just stars and meteors and snow and like effects that are easy to make but then have a big pan <laughs> and pans are actually not very good in animation because the animation gets lost but uh i mean i i kind of had to go to reach out for like slow camera movement so there was this like a lot of these characters sitting in this sort of like a bar like a inspired by star wars sort of a space meeting point and there's a whole chapter about that in the long version david bow is smoking in the background references uh, on, on science fiction because it's really important for solar walk so actually it's like did you Put your own, like, or are you a fan of <laughs> sci-fi? And then that, no. <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I am. I, I think it's, uh, it's a very cool genre because uh, people ask me, like, why do you uh, mm. work so much in this? And it's actually, I think, because I was thinking in the beginning, I was like uh, saying that it's because you can do anything. But I mean, that's not really an answer. I think it's because good sci-fi that I like is is uh, always based on concept and ne never on character. It's never about a character getting from A to B. It's always this concept that ha holds together the film. Mm -hmm. And it's it's one idea or, yeah, an atmosphere that makes a strong sci-fi. And I like that approach to filmmaking. So, But I don't think my next film is going to be a sci-fi, to be honest. Like, mm -hmm. I'm a little bit done doing that but it was uh, it's 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 a fun thing to do another background um, space and water and uh, yeah I, I spent so much time painting these <coughs> yeah I have a slide of we, well in the end we really sort of went crazy because uh, because we didn't have a, a prop, like we had a production manager, but she was doing like three other time, three other things in the same time. So Nicole Stafford <laughs> and me were, uh, were basically managing the whole thing uh, together, and it was really uh, kind of getting to a point. But what, what's this part of the process actually? Just. Uh, <laughs> This is the part after in like after a good shot after a good ten or uh -huh. eleven no uh, no actually it's light out it's breakfast yeah. I think it's uh, no that one was like when we had like started to have beers or something yeah. she like, <laughs> and I don't know she's she just has this character that she pulls off sometimes and then it's mm -hmm. it's good for everybody Inspi inspiration this is my inspiration my muse. I think it's never ending. <laughs> um, okay, this is just a picture of how the live show looked like. I actually have a video of uh, the trailer of mm -hmm. how this whole thing is. It's online. You can also see that if you uh, look for my name on Vimeo. And um, it was actually super great. Like I'm, to be honest, I wasn't a huge fan of the music. Like I was parts of it I really liked, and then some parts I didn't really care for and but then in the end together with all the musicians it was so powerful and mm. really nice and like it filled the room it was a, an amazing experience to watch the film with the music and everything but the format of the screening is like it's really giant it's not only cinemascope it's bigger oh, where, where was it's it? 2k cinemascope oh, but okay. it this this uh, screening room it this was the premiere it was huge it was really really uh Spectacular. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was cool. That's the poster. And then I don't. 
I think that's it. Let's go back to the poster because I wanted to ask you, you know, when already before we had uh, Nicola and Dana, they were, the, their film also selected to Berlinale. How, what does it change, you know, to be uh, to be selected for a so important festival as a short animator, animation film director? It changes a lot. Like I remember when I was selected with uh, Symphony Number no. 42, it just uh, turned around my life basically. I mm. really felt a change, but I mean, I didn't know much before that, to be honest. T t I, um, but it was definitely pushing my name out to other festivals and people. To st um, and as a as an animation film within documentary and live action and everything, you you are like the weird one, like the animator. It's always like I actually really prefer to go to animation festivals because it's like the same sort of people or like, but on a live action like Berlinale and everything, it's it's a different uh, vibe. <laughs> and and, and the people really consider you as uh, some maniac <laughs> or something. And when they, they get to know like that, oh, you had to work for like one year to make uh, <laughs> 10 minutes of film, and then they... Yeah, they don't, I don't think they can really emphasize with that and they don't have to, it's all right. <laughs> Okay, I, I promise to Biborka, uh, who is also here with us, the uh, director of the Balas Institute, that uh, we will uh, not talk about politics uh, and animation. This is this is the she went out. This is the topic of the next panel. We'll have like politics and festival. But Reka, for you, okay, like being um, uh, Solar Rock being not financed, as we have we had also uh, Gabor Oswat here uh, on the round table and explaining the situation. Mm -hmm. Does it make you feel rejected from your country or does it make you be angry or does it make you continuing hoping that with the next project uh, your work will be recognized at home? How, how do you feel about this? Um, this uh, Solar Walk isn't a, a good example because Solar Walk was uh, an approach from the Danish. So it was never me applying for Hungarian money and not getting it. So okay. it's not it's not the the example of other some some other filmmakers here who got rejected and it's uh, it's it was uh, yeah it, it's basically coming out of a commissioned thing um, but then they didn't control the process at all. So that was really really great. But uh, so that was a lucky sort of setup mm. basically. Mm. But yeah, I it's it's I understand that they don't really actually like very few forums said, like even just came with the news when it got selected to Berlinale and then it also won the Audi short, short film award and even then like not many press in Hungary was mm. uh, paying attention paying yeah. attention because it's not having Hungarian money and mm. I I feel like. Mm. That's why, like, mm. <laughs> I am, I also, I was sort of surprised that Berlin Alice, I mean, I wasn't surprised, I don't know, I was just like, weird to be there, at my name, and then it's Denmark, but it's only Denmark, there's no, and everybody thought I'm Danish, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I had mm -hmm. to, like, explain that I'm not, <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, I let you, a few questions from the audience, and then we will finish with a nice gift that you brought us. Yes. <laughs> because we are really late today, so, but yeah, that's the festival life, what we can do. So, anybody has a concrete question <coughs> for Reka? If not, then it will be done later on, uh, at the bar or something, I think it's, uh, it's a better chance. Mm -hmm. what, what did you brought us? Actually, you, you will have a sneak peek preview of your last film, It's right? actually not, a sh not even a sneak peek, it's a final film, so... <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I finished this film uh, with uh, Nicole Stafford and Pernille Lacier, uh, who we co-made, co-directed uh, this piece, uh, this five-minute little... It's a little joke, basically. It's made for FX Networks, this American uh, TV channel who's uh, starting to commission independent filmmakers for for short things like, uh, it's very similar to Adult Swim or MTV in the 90s where they made this cartoon sushi, like a lot of different uh, shorts uh, packed into one or sort of distributed between the series uh, mm -hmm. on the channel. And it was a funny process because uh, they don't really tell you anything. They are very, very free of whatever you want to do, you can do it. and. Um, and, and Pernilla and Nicole and me sort of uh, made this thing where we were just in individual. I, I came with the basic idea because they approached 
like the FX uh, wrote me, and then I had to give them a basic uh, idea for it. But then I told uh, Nicole and Pernilla I would like to collaborate, and then we uh, all designed it, the three of us, uh, and then we took pieces of each our design, even within one character, the fa the eyes of one of our ca uh, characters, and then the so it was this like exquisite corpse. So it looks like none of our thing, but it's something else. It's like a combination of the three of our thing, mm. and then we all did every task. So everybody just animated and did the same task. So there wasn't such a division, but then. Some people were more heavy on the visual part, Pernilla, and then I was more heavy on the writing. I, I did the narration, and then Nicole did the more hardcore animation because she she's uh, she's a magician <laughs> of animation. She mm -hmm. went to Cal Arts, and she's really good. I heard uh, maybe you you are going to Cal Arts as well. You have a proposal to yeah. for. A I yeah, they uh, asked me to, to do a workshop at the anima uh, experimental animation uh, course, which is, would be great. I did. I visited Cal Arts before for a, a talk, uh, two two talks, and it was such a very cool environment mm. to go. So I would love to do that next year. Okay, sure.